Hey everybody, I'm Aaron with Hoy Tractor Parts and today we're going to be doing a brake job on this little Yanmar tractor. Now Yanmar uses the same basic brake design on pretty much all of their YM series tractors. The number of bolts in the brake cover might be different, but the rest of the steps shown here should be the same. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you have all of the parts you're going to need for the job. Just head on over to our website, hoytractor.com, select parts, your tractor model number, and then the category of the part that you need. Now you can technically get to the brakes without removing the rear tire, but it makes the job so much easier, we're just going to go ahead and pull it off. You never want to rely on a jack when you're working under something like this, so always use jack stands. And now we can unhook the brake linkage. You can usually save these little pins, but this one was pretty rusted and I have a bunch of them, so I'm not going to waste a lot of time on it. And now we'll just remove the bolts that hold the brake cover on. Now this is where things can get a little tricky. Sometimes these brake covers are stuck. Just be sure your brake lever's in the neutral position and sometimes you'll get lucky like this and a couple taps of the hammer and it'll fall off. Other times you have to get a pry bar and really spend a lot of time. Just be careful because these covers are usually cast and it can break pretty easily. This is one of our brake kits. It'll come with pretty much everything you need to do the job correctly. It'll come with the shoes, springs, and gaskets. Some kits come with O-rings, just depends on the model. So here's our brake cover. It's got the shoes held in place by the springs. Usually I just take a little screwdriver, put underneath one of the shoes, and it'll snap right out. Some of the models have a snap ring holding in the brake lever and some of them don't. This one does, so we've got to remove it. And now we've got to get the brake lever out of the brake housing and sometimes this can be tough. If your brake housing's been full of water for the last 30 years, you may actually need to press this out. Ours wasn't that bad, so a little WD-40 and a pry bar and we finally got it out. Our pin is actually in pretty good shape, so we'll probably just hit it with a little emery cloth and it'll be good as new. Same thing with the brake cover. Everything looks good. We'll just clean it up and put it back together. Some models have O-rings on the brake lever like this one, so we need to get the old O-rings off and put on the new ones. Now we'll just use a little bit of good grease on here to keep it lubricated. And then we'll put the cover back on. Now normally I would have already removed the gasket and I would have cleaned the cover up a lot better, but since I'm just doing this for a video, I'm not too worried about it. But if you're doing this on your own tractor, you will need to remove the old gasket. Well, now looks like a good time for a little note about these brake shoes. I would love to be able to offer a better quality brake shoe. The reality is that these are such slow selling parts, some of these shoes only sell 20 or so a year, that I'm thankful that anyone is still making these. There was a few year period where you didn't have any options. If you needed brakes, you either had to try to get yours relined or you just did without. Now some of these models are better than others, but some will require a little trimming to make them fit. We have looked into getting these shoes made ourselves and build them to a better standard, 
but the minimum order is so large that we would have to sell some of these shoes for well over $200 a shoe to ever recover our investment. The quality of the friction material on these shoes is great, but you might have to do a little trimming to the bases in order to get them to fit your tractor. So now install the shoes onto the cams, making sure that the adjustable cam is facing the same direction as the fixed cam, and then install your springs. You want to make sure that the brake lever is turned so that the shoes aren't spread out at all. This will make it a lot easier to install the springs and it will also make it a lot easier to install the shoes into the drum. You can kind of see how this works now. Whenever the cam is moved, it spreads apart the two shoes, which puts friction on the drum, slowing down the tractor. Now you're going to want to clean out the brake drum area. This tractor was built back in the 70s when they put asbestos in basically everything, so be careful with this dust. I just use a good cleaner and then just wipe it out. Do not use compressed air. I'm just doing this for a video, so I'm not really spending a lot of time here, but you're going to want to get as much of this out as you can. Now is a good time to check out your brake drum. You want to make sure that the drum is smooth. If you have any rust on the drum, it's going to act like sandpaper and wear down your shoes really fast. This is also a good time to check out your brake shaft seal. This area should be completely dry. If you see any oil in the brake drum area, then that means the seal behind the brake drum has failed, and it might be a good time to replace that. Now we'll go ahead and install our brake cover bolts and get those tightened up. Then we'll install our brake linkage. And then we need to adjust the linkage on our brake pedal. To set the brakes correctly, you'll just loosen the lock nut and then adjust the turnbuckle until you have three quarters of an inch of free travel on your pedal. If you have more than three quarters of an inch, you would shorten the linkage, and if you have less than three quarters of an inch, you need to lengthen the linkage. Adjust so that both the left and the right pedals are the same. And that's really all there is to it. Just repeat these same steps on the other side. And as always, please feel free to contact us if you have any questions or problems.